video number 22 of a series about complex arithmetic. We've been focusing on powers and roots. We're going to continue focusing on that, mostly focused on roots, and we're going to use Mathematica to visualize things. So I'm also teaching you some Mathematica. In the last video we saw that um, when we think about roots of a complex number like the complex, the complex number of 1, which is of course also real, um, we get more than one answer. And we'll continue to focus on roots of 1 here, and when you talk about roots of 1, you sometimes think of 1 as being represented by the word unity. Unity means 1 in math. And when we write this expression, 1 to the 1 half power, we, we wanted it to mean all possible square roots of 1, all possible complex numbers whose square is 1. By thinking about the polar form of the proposed answer, we were able to derive that the only possible answers were plus or minus 1. But with cube roots, it gets a little bit more complicated. 1 to the 1 third means all possible cube roots of 1. Again, we think about the polar form of a proposed answer, and it led us to reasoning that its modulus is 1, and its argument could be one of, um, well, three things that give three distinct numbers. You can use other arguments because of the uh, alternative ways of representing numbers with polar form. Anyway, the answers end up being 1, e to the i 2 pi over 3, and e to the i 4 pi over 3. If you use Euler's formula to expand these last two in rectangular coordinates, they end up being negative 1 plus i times square root of 3 over 2, and negative 1 minus i times square root of 3 over 2. They're complex conjugates of each other. Let's focus on another example in this video. Let's focus on 12th roots of 1. So again, we're calling this Greek letter here zeta, a proposed 12th root of 1, and we're going to try to figure out what zeta could be. We think about zeta as having this type of polar form, rho times e to the i phi, so rho would be the modulus of zeta, and phi would be an argument of it. If we raise it to the 12th power, you've got to raise the modulus to the 12th power, and you've got to multiply the argument by 12. Now, with Thinking about roots of 1, the rho is easy because that's got to be non-negative real number. And so the only way rho to the 12th is going to equal 1 is if rho itself will equal 1. But the argument is a trickier matter. Because of the multiplicity of ways of representing the number 1 in polar form, e to the i times 0i, e to the i times 2 pi, e to the i 4 pi, e to the i times 6 pi, e to the i times 8 pi, etc., also including e to the negative to the i times negative 2 pi, e to the i times negative 4 pi. Because of that, there are different things that can work for phi that will generate different numbers. One thing that will work here is if 12 phi is equal to 0, and therefore phi will equal 0. Another thing that will work is if 12 phi is equal to 2 pi, and therefore phi is equal to 2 pi over 12, which of course simplifies to pi over 6. Another is if 12 phi equals 4 pi, so that phi itself is 4 pi over 12 or pi over 3. Let's keep track of these down here. So 1 is going to work, e to the i times 0. e to the i times 2 pi over 12, which is again e to the i times pi over 6, but I'm not going to reduce that to pi over 6 here. e to the i times 4 pi over 12 works e to the i times 6 pi over 12, e to the i times 8 pi over 12, e to the i times 10 pi over 12, 12 pi over 12, which of course is pi. And in fact, this is the number negative 1 here. 14 pi over 12, 16 pi over 12, 18 pi over 12, 20 pi over 12, we're getting close to the end here, 22 pi over 12, and if you think about it, that's all we need. If we did 24 pi over 12, that's the same as 2 pi, we'd back, be back to the number 1, and then it would continue to cycle. If we consider negative um, multiples of 2 pi over 12, you would generate the same numbers in this sequence as well. How many answers do we have here? Count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 
5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. We've got 12 roots of unity, 12 roots of 1. Let's uh, finish this video by showing you how to plot these and showing you how they make a nice picture. I'm going to use list plot to plot them. And I think I'm also going to use table to make things more efficient. Table again generates lists of numbers. It generates lists. I'm going to have a list of points that it's going to be generating. As n varies, say, from 0 to 11, n is going to be the multiple of 2 pi over 12 that I use. And it's going to generate, we want to plot points, so we want to plot some the real part of e to the i times 2 pi times n over 12. And the imaginary part for the second coordinate of e to the i times 2 pi times n over 12. If n is 0, this is going to generate the complex number 1. If n is 1, it generates this thing, although again plotted as a point by using the real part and the imaginary part. So this will make a basic plot for us. There they are, that's kind of pretty. Let's make it look a little bit prettier as well in various ways and that's how I'll finish the videos is just focusing on making this prettier. Um, I see I want to make the axes more true to each other. The scale is the same so we see it really is on a circle. So adding that aspect ratio will make it that way. I'd like to see these better. Plot style, uh, maybe red, point size, point zero 0.02. There they are, that's nice. So maybe I'll make them even bigger, point zero 0.03. Maybe we want to combine this with some line segments. So I'm, i got to embed this in a show and use graphics. Let's see. Probably want to do this with table as well. Um, graphics, thick blue line. I want my lines to start at the origin and go out to these points. So I'm going to do some copying and pasting here. And let's see here, somewhere there's a mistake. Okay. And I need to embed this in a table if I'm going to make a bunch of line segments like this. Table. And goes from 0 to 11. Let's see, I, I hope this works here. Um, there could be an issue with maybe having too many curly braces. This this generates a list of graphics. It, we might run into trouble with this. Let's see if it, if it works or not. It worked. Okay, got lucky, I guess. So there we have a nice picture. And you can see it looks like these are all the same angle apart. And if you think about it, it's got to be 30 degrees apart. And we could also, I won't take the time to do it in this video because I'm about out of time here, we could also connect these line segments with straight straight lines. And what we would get would be a regular 12-sided polygon called a dodecagon, showing you the nice relationship between the 12th, 12th roots of unity, the 12th roots of one, a very nice way to visualize it.